Hey everyone, welcome to a brand new episode of Zach's Artful Podcast, the show with the most. I'm your wonderful host, Zach Cobb. We have a wonderful show in store for you, so just kick back, relax, and enjoy the ride. Welcome, welcome everyone to a brand new episode of Zach's Artful Podcast. I hope everyone's doing okay. We have ourselves a very, 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 I don't know how many varies there are, but you know, it's not enough for how awesome this guest is. Miss Gianna Blatnik, welcome to the show. How are you doing? I am doing pretty good. How are you? Oh, I'm doing quite well. Thank you for hopping on. Thank you for having me. I feel honored. <laughs> <laughs> so, what is who is Gianna Platinum? Give a lo- folks a little bit about yourself. Okay, so I am now a music education major at Wright State University. Ooh, um, go ahead. Is soprano. I'm just really just talking about music. Go ahead, but anyways, the list. Like all the music stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Every single music thing is Gianna. Besides music, I also enjoy gaming, like every other person who's probably been on the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> you, you know, I, I, I don't think. Oh yeah, yeah, pretty, <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Every other friend of <laughs> guess has been on the show as a gamer in some sort of way. Oh yeah, for sure. Um, what else? Um. I'm blanking out. <laughs> so Gianna Blotnick is a singer, musician, a gamer, and kind of crackhead energy, but... <laughs> <laughs> Not crackhead. Wait, don't forget songwriter. Don't forget songwriter. You're right. Um, Yeah. <laughs> So, how did you fall, uh, get become interested in music? Well, it all started when I was young, because it really came from my family. Um, my grandparents, like, I have my grandfather that sings and all that. And then my mom started singing just for fun. She didn't really go out to perform. And I'm like... Okay, and I started listening to her music, which wasn't the most appropriate at my age, but I'd still sing to them anyways. Um, I was like, this is fun. I like this. I think I was like probably like seven, I think, when I really got into it. Hmm. And then like moving forward, I did choir um, around the fifth grade because that was one of the electives um school i don't want to remember in the slightest fair enough fair enough i enjoyed that but then sixth and seventh grade i just kind of just took a break from that because it's like i want to study hall (laughs) 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 what is it band (laughs) music (laughs) well i did band i did band from sixth to seventh grade and Uh. i got was I just did not like it because I sucked at reading music. <laughs> no, I, I feel that. What section were you in? I was a clarinet. I think I was second clarinet in middle school. Okay, okay. Did you get to have any solos? Your no, absolutely not. Oh, uh, no. You <laughs> did have your breakout clarinet moment. <laughs> Be the Squidward of the class. <laughs> Yeah, I used to look at the person next to me and see where his fingers are going, and I just kind of follow along. <laughs> no, I feel, I feel. I think it was fifth grade when I got introduced to our a cappella group there, and mm-hmm. I really liked it. And I had to wait a few years to audition because, I mean, I think they used to let seventh grade in an eighth grade yeah. but then they changed that because they wanted to go to competitions and that was only for high school level which is ninth through 12th grade okay so i think like around seventh grade i wanted to audition for the group this was before they changed it to ninth and 12th 
and then they changed it and i'm like oh shit i can't audition i'm too young now oh no i really did enjoy choir i did get some recognition and i'm like you know what i should still keep this up because i there feel like go. i can do somewhere with this yeah so now you flex your even more expansive musical resume piano player choir singer clarinet player okay at piano i'm not too great but i'm okay at it i may be sounding modest but i'm pretty sure i'm not anyways you're better you're much better piano player than i'll ever be i will just say that i'll the only song i'll remember is oh christmas tree from like (laughs) fourth fourth grade because i only did it to get a zuzu pet because i had a fake i had a zuzu pet phase no i did too i think i had like Three of them. Oh, I had a little four, and then I wanted to get the, uh, I think it was the ninja set one that they had. Oh my and I God. that, and I, so I played it, and um, she gave it to me after our winter, rec- uh, my music teacher, uh, uh, after our winter recital where I played Dave um, in uh, Alvin and the Chipmunks. She gave it to me. She said, Thank you for pl- being our Dave and uh, playing piano. And she gave me a big old bag with like a play set and like hamsters like, <gasps> Zuzu Pants! <laughs> but yeah, um, I did choir from eighth grade. I auditioned for the group that year actually, and I got in. <laughs> I went from soprano to alto. Oh, alto squad, baby. Altos are fun. I miss those days. I'm now a soprano one, but we'll get there. Um, (laughs) (laughs) Oh, building up. Oh, yeah. I did acapella for four years. I enjoyed it. I mean, not at first. We're not going to get into details. That's a whole other story within itself. If you know, (laughs) you know. Yeah, if you know, you know. So that was fun. I was really interested in it. I started blanking out for a sec. My apologies. (laughs) You're fine. And then my last year was the most impactful, I would say. I don't even think that's a word, but I'm just going to say it. No, it is. You're good. Okay, cool. Yes. (laughs) Um, I um, was like, what am I going to do for college and all that? And that's when I was so in love with music and acapella. I started actually learning how to read music and understand music theory around like junior year of high school because I wanted to actually learn how to compose and Mm. learn how to write my own music and all that kind of stuff. And I think that that did me wonders because my last year of acapella, I had to learn a new part. (laughs) Oh, (laughs) Um, I went from alto one to soprano one, mm. and that really took a turn for me. I'm like, oh, shit, I'm on this level now right. of like higher notes, and it was something else, but it was also really great. And my biggest inspiration, she's the reason why I got into music education. Her name is Gloria Carpenter. I love her to pieces. I was recently in touch with her because I showed her um, a choir concert I had with our top choir at Wright State. And she really enjoyed it. We're getting too far. No, ahead. no, it's perfect. It's perfect. No, I was going to transition into uh, you working on your music. So what would you say is like the hardest part of composing a song? The hardest part is trying to figure out what I exactly want as kind of like my background, like audio. Well, <laughs> more of like what I want. I am making this completely a cappella. I am not uh, like having any tracks or anything. Um, yeah, so it's usually just hard trying to make background music, quote unquote, really just a backtrack whenever mm. I make a song. Because usually I have words for my song already. I just can't think of what I want instrumentally for it. I There is something I want to finish. I made a demo for it recently, speaking of my music. It's a song called Thank You. 
it's basically I am thanking a certain kind of person in my life. I'm not going to be saying names on here because I don't want anyone getting called out. Ooh, ooh, tea, spilling but tea. If you know who you are, you know who you are. Basically, the song Thank You is me thanking this person for at least giving me a chance to be part of their life. But obviously, it didn't turn out the way we wanted it to turn out. And I was hoping for that kind of relationship to continue. But due to the circumstances and different schedules, we could not work it out. And other stuff that I won't mention. I'm not going to talk about the entirely bad. Because there's so much that really just happened Mm. in where I was in that relationship. But sadly, we have not talked since. Maybe getting this message across will show that I still care about this person and will still be there for this person. What would you say is your like biggest musical inspiration? My musical inspiration, I've listened to a lot of Little Mix and Ariana Grande just to cope with what I am going through. Mm. I went through a lot this semester. That's really all I gotta say. Because I also listen, okay, everybody does not like this new album, but I actually really did enjoy Charlie Puth's new album. And that was also like a huge inspiration. <laughs> the song that really hit me hard from Charlie's album, it was either No More Drama or When You're Sad, I'm Sad. And then, like, listening to Ariana Grande has helped me a lot, too. The song Ghostin' really hits me hard, even though that's not technically the message that is for my situation. But I also really like Fake Smile because I felt like I had to act like I'm still in a good mood around people. Right. After putting up with people who have done me wrong. Sorry, this is really depressing. No, it's fine. No, you're fine. Don't apologize for sharing your emotions. We, people have talked to uh, a lot of people on the show have shared a lot of trauma that they went through, and it's it's a natural way of like release and like accepting a process of everything. So don't apologize for being human and sharing emotions. Okay, cool. <laughs> yeah, so Damn I it. don't don't mean to go all therapists on you, but you know. Oh my god! <laughs> but no, you're fine. You're fine. I was, I was gonna say, which, uh, which album do you think is ve- uh, underappreciated? All of Charlie Puth's songs, but I can understand why people do not like Charlie Puth's albums to a certain extent, because sometimes he doesn't properly use his talent to kind of branch out and do different genres like he has done jazz before he has done like a few contemporary like i think when you're sad i'm sad i'm pretty sure is his first contemporary Mm. maybe i I thought yeah oh i'm sorry i was gonna say i thought the the one song he did with the the guy from bts was a contemporary kind of thing oh no that's pop oh that's just straight up pop oh okay yeah, that's so pop. <laughs> oh, I don't know. I'm sorry. Look, I I don't I don't listen to radio. I don't I don't listen. I'm not up to date with the musical stuffs as much as I I used to be. Okay, so for me with college so far, when I got into freshman year, I became an alto again. Going in because I signed up for mezzo soprano when I went in to the vocal department. Interesting fact, they never got my audition video. What? Are you serious? <laughs> they never did because, I mean, I get it because, like, I had to actually, like, forward it. Ah, forward it. <laughs> you are on <laughs> fire today. Oh, my gosh. You are killing it. <laughs> okay, here we go. Here's a real take. So, um, <laughs> yeah. I had to forward it. Mm. to um my um not studio but like because I wasn't in the studio I had to turn it in to a few professors who were running that but they did not get it they put me in which I was surprised I'm like they never got an audition video like on it uh 
<laughs> and they just they looked at my resume. They looked at the voice parts I was in. And a few ensembles and, like, other vocal stuff I did, like, if I competed in any competitions or anything. I did list those, so they put me in. Mm. And I was like, cool. Going in, they put me in alto. But then when I had my voice lessons, my voice teacher was like, Gianna, you are not an alto. <laughs> You're a soprano. I'm like, the f*** I am. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, Okay. So yeah, I, and now I'm at junior year. I'm really enjoying it. I am now in the top choir at Wright State. I am going on to doing more difficult soprano pieces. <laughs> so yeah, that's college for me so far. You're on your way to become the next Charlie Puth, maybe. You learn how to make some hyper pop like he does on his TikToks. It's funny because everybody at my school calls me like the female Charlie Puth because of his perfect pitch and my perfect pitch. Hey, you know, I'm just saying, flex it while you got it. Oh my gosh. It's so funny too because whenever I flex my perfect pitch, everybody would be like, Gianna, shut the f up. <laughs> Like, we get it. You got musical talent. We got it. Oh, man. So, yeah. I am in a very happy place. Besides all the other stuff that's happened in college, right. I'm loving music. <laughs> Good. So what, yeah. so, what are your plans to do after um, completing college? I'm hoping to find a school I can work at because once, like, we hit, like, spring semester of senior year, that's when I get to student teach. And that's gonna be something. I have my field placement next semester because I think junior, yeah, junior music ed, they have to have a field placement just to see which grade fits them the best to basically teach. I think that's how it works. I hmm. don't know yet. I need to ask a few people. And then once you kind of have that, I think you do two semesters of that and then you go into student teaching. Though I do need to do a recital oh. or a portfolio, but I have decided to do a recital because Ooh. I want to build my confidence. Yes. And all. Okay. So, yeah. Yes. What songs are you planning out for this recital? That is the hardest part about the recital is picking the songs that I would want to do for it. Um. I want to pick some songs that I have done. Um, I've done a lot of like Baroque era music for high soprano. Mm. Going, I did do one song that I actually knew. It's Ooh. called um, I Could Have Danced All Night from My Fair Lady. Oh, nice. Okay. I, I enjoyed it. And it's funny. I think I might also do my aria that I'm working on this semester. It's from one of Mozart's Italian arias. Ooh, ooh we get fancy. Basically, and basically this character is very sassy. She's confident and all this stuff. And in my head, I'm like, wow, I am absolutely nothing like her. <laughs> oh, so you're going to get your theater kid on. You're going to get that person. Oh, ooh. Are you going to go just grab it with it? You're going to go like all the way extra with it? Actually, it's an opera. Oh, no. <laughs> scary! I I never want to be an opera singer when I do go into that kind of stuff. Mm. That's what my voice teacher is trying to get me to be at because uh. most of the sopranos in her studio do opera mm -hmm. and all that. I've never really heard of like besides Adam Lambert, like pe like. Uh, Broadway pe theater people going into like mainstream pop music. Oh yeah, yeah. Because I, I know that Bob is, and then like, who is she? She played as Glinda in Wicked. Oh, Adina. Oh, Adina Menzel. That's right. She did. She was. Oh no, that's that was the Wicked Witch of the West, but she did as well. It's Kristen. Ch oh, Kristen. Ch that's right. Why did I think <laughs> of? Why did I think of that one? <laughs> 
I, I totally forgot. I, no. I think Idina Manzel is like a better example of someone who went from Broadway, who is now doing like mainstream music stuff. So that makes sense. That makes oh, more yeah. sense. I was, I was going to say, I totally forgot Christian Chenoweth has like a Christmas album out. Oh my <laughs> gosh! <laughs> Mariah Carey. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Christian Channel with this top of this year. I think oh, uh, uh the girl from uh Glee, uh Lee Michelle, she did Oh, no. oh yes, yes. <laughs> oh she she did some pop albums back in the day when she was popping off. Oh goodness. Yeah, you, How did you read though? Uh, she learned songs if she can't read. Oh, I mean, she was a musical person. She was in um, a Spring Awakening with uh, Jonathan Groff. I love Jonathan Groff. Oh, John, the spitting goat. Yes. <laughs> oh my gosh, just speaking of him, I want you to listen to, I think this was like scrapped from Frozen 2. There's like a song. Oh. Oh, oh, oh. I'm, I'm listening. I don't remember what it's called, but it's been floating around my for you page on TikTok. It's like pull the fire for you, my dear, or something like that. I don't know. Oh, uh, I only knew the one Frozen Two song that I know from Jonathan is the one, the one boy band song that he did with the deer, or with the reindeer in the forest. I love that one so much. <laughs> it gives me, it gives me that like the vibe from the Surface Pressure song with like the dancing donkeys. Oh, it gives me Queen vibes, and I love it <laughs> with the no, layer of harmony. It was too much. I loved it. I think that was my favorite part of Frozen Two. <laughs> I love it. Well, speaking of famous people, uh, if you um, became like a famous musician, who would you want to collaborate with? I would love to collaborate with Charlie Puth because, I mean, he's my favorite. Of course, of course. I would love to collaborate with like Elton John or something like because that would be amazing. Oh, yeah. That'd be cool. I mean, I'd like to see, you know. Isn't he supposed to retire? I mean, he had his last concert, so there goes my hopes. I was, <laughs> I mean, quote retire. He's still like putting out like remixes of stuff, so he's not, he's not, he's not done. He's still doing he's still stuff. Still music out of his musical. <laughs> so. That's that crackhead energy right there. What is uh, what has been your favorite song, like, out of all the songs that you performed in your musical career thus far? Do, uh, did you like performing the most? Like, um, in general, in the yeah. music program. Yeah, like in general. That is really hard because I've worked on so many. But if I had to pick one, there's this song that I've done in collegiate this semester. It's called How Great Thou Art. I am definitely not a religious person, but I think the message of that song is just so powerful. Mm. And just hearing everything, the transitions between each part that the trebles would sing, then the tenor bass, and then combining together to sing just such a beautiful melody and a beautiful chorus hits me so hard and i sang this i'm gonna get a bit emotional here um yeah. i went with my collegiate crowd because we found out i'm not gonna get into detail about that actually take it back because yeah. it's a bit too depressing and i want to be respectful towards that um basically we went to a funeral and we performed that song uh it was in tears I was breaking down crying after we finished. Oh man. That I can't imagine that was easy to do. That like how did you feel in that moment? I was obviously very emotional performing it, but it was beautiful. Mm. 
to me, it felt beautiful and right to sing this song. The message is so powerful, too. Coming from a non-religious person, but, like... Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I feel that. What would you consider, like, the perfect album? I would like people to kind of, like, mix up what they do. I mean, they have their genres and all that. Like, there's certain kind of genre. I mean, Charlie Puth definitely does. Um, I would say just something a bit different, a different message for each song, because I feel like with some songs, the message is just very similar mm. and all that good stuff. Like they so all kind of blend I'm thinking, in. I'm talking about each of my different experiences of what I've been going through. But obviously, I'm not going to be making it about the same person. <laughs> the whole, yeah. Yeah. Just having a little bit of, of all experiences into it. Yeah. Gotcha. So when, when are we expecting the release date? Probably 2023. Uh, you're gonna, oh, you're going to pull a long wait. Uh, yeah, because uh, it's going to probably take me a while. Because I have song ideas floating in the air. Ooh. What if you end up becoming yeah. accidentally like, becoming like a billboard topping artist one day? Then I'd probably hide in the corner and oh, think about no. stuff. <laughs> I'd be a little scared, honestly. It's like, oh, crap, now I really have to work on stuff. You're I can't trend- be procrastinating. Trending sound on TikTok. Oh, goodness. Then that would be fine. If I was, like, on the radio, I'd be, like, a little concerned. Oh, It'd dude. be cool, but, like, I'm, I don't want to be that yeah, the famous. P- the perfect pitch artist that went number one. Oh, besides <laughs> Charlie Poopy, of course, but, you know. Oh, yeah. Gosh. Yeah. yeah, that's basically my experience with music and all that. What would you? Uh, what advice would you give to people who are kind of interested in that field? Ooh. I've heard so many inspirational things, but I just don't want to take them from people. No, it's, I understand. <laughs> for me, like, music is a way for me to cope. And... For those, you're allowed to speak out your thoughts and all this kind of stuff with music. Don't be afraid to give people a message Mm. or like some kind of PSA or like any of that. Do like make music that comes from your heart or through your thoughts. I think it's a good kind of therapy for me, honestly. I mean, it's not for everyone, but it's like, that's what I would probably say about music. Don't be afraid to like show the world who you are if you're comfortable you know i'm sorry that's not a great message no, that's I, what I, like, I get okay. what you're saying like you don't don't let it be like let it come natural process come naturally to you instead of forcing it yeah basically i gotcha world who you are show them why you want to do music show them what your inspiration of music is and all this kind of stuff Show people that I can make music. I can inspire people. I can do all this and make people happy. There you go. Yes, you heard it here first. Uh, so any um, other stuff you want to promote or where anyone can find any music in the future? I'm going to be putting out demos of more songs I'll be putting out. So for those on Snapchat... I might put some on Instagram, maybe. Stay tuned. <laughs> oh, there you have it. Thank you so much, Gianna, for hopping on this episode. I greatly appreciate it. And thank you for having me. This was a lot of fun. Thank you. And thank you all for listening to this episode. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe. You know the deal. All that YouTube stuff. Um, live, laugh, love. Stay tuned for the next episode coming your way soon. This has been Zach's Art for Podcasts. I've been your Zach Cobb. Take care. And peace.